interweb and the Twitter. And I think we have time for a few questions. Or not. Okay. Right. Okay. For those of you who didn't hear, the question was, have I seen any research on the cost of app switching? The short answer is no. I don't know if it's been conducted, and I would question the source of that research because maybe it's from an email provider. <laughs> well, don't, don't adopt these new tools because your information will be split. And look, any tool is only as good as the people who use them. I go back to my consulting days, and VPs would proudly say that we've got the best of breed business intelligence application. And I say, that's wonderful. The data in it sucks. Give me a piece of paper with accurate information as opposed to some sophisticated tool. So I don't know the answer, but you're right. Unless people actually force others to use these tools, those who are unwilling, those tools won't be very useful. There was a story I heard a couple of weeks ago about an executive who was probably 52, 53 years old, so a little bit resistant to change, hired as the chief marketing officer in such and such a company. And that person would not use the collaborative tool. I forget which one it was, it doesn't really matter. They wound up firing that person because they, they kept telling them, you need to keep updating this because we don't know the status of this, right? You're the only person who's not contributing. So it, it's not just about getting the tools. This is why this book isn't just about new technologies. Um, it's about organizational change, culture, management, language. Because if you have a great tool but nobody uses it, what's the point of the tool? I agree with you. Any other questions? Yes? So one of the problems with email is that after you send the email, and the same time with a piece of paper, um, that piece of paper or the email you sent doesn't get updated with new information. And the benefit of online tools like SmartSheet is that the sheet can be updated. Um, so what do you think about conversation features inside online products, like the discussions in SmartSheet or the discussions in Google Docs? Um, you know, how do you think those compare to using carrying a conversation on the online document? I think they're great. The most recent version, I'm a Mac guy, so I think I'm running 2011 Office. And I still, people think I'm anti-Microsoft. I'm, I'm not. Um, I just happen to be a Mac guy. Um, the new version of Office for Mac actually has better comment functionality. Because you're right, it makes sense to have them in there. Um, I like the fact that I can update certain things, but you're right. If I send someone an attachment in an email, and Gmail has, what, a 10-second filter, I think in Outlook you can request that the email is deleted or pulled back or whatever they call I will not send someone an attachment because I know how I am. I will send someone a link and it's to Dropbox. And often I will forget what I, something key in the document. I don't have to send the person another email. I typically will just update the document. Now a day later that person could have downloaded it, but I, I'm all for that. I, I, I think you want to capture the conversations. You want to put context around them. You want to make it easy for people to filter, right? And here's the rub. This is why I don't understand why more companies aren't implementing these tools. Oh, there's this learning curve. Really? Okay, there is. But most of you are already using social networks. A lot of these are basically modeled after Facebook. If you look at, say, Yammer, which is one of the case studies in the book, you think you're looking at Facebook. Right? It's got searchable hashtags. You can filter information. You can see in all this noise of, of content, just say Slack, same thing. You create a channel. You can just see you know, hashtag marketing or hashtag bugs or whatever. So I, I don't understand why people are so keen on using them at home, but so resistant at work. Uh, there was a question there? How do you use Smartsheet? I have played around with it. I actually use a different tool to manage my tasks. I use something called Todoist. I just happened to take to that one. Um, but I have played around with it. It was very useful. Uh, Timing-wise, when I was talking uh, to Jody about including a case study for Smartsheet in the book, it didn't work out, but I was playing around with it. And I, I'm not averse to it. I just, for, this, for what I need to do, keeping track of my tasks, Todoist actually made a lot more sense. But for managing projects, it's no longer around. Um, I run, as a side project, a small publishing company. And I wouldn't engage with people over email. I actually put that in the statement of work. And I used a tool, it's no longer around, called do.com. And it was a very intuitive tool. It had an app. But to me, the tool is almost irrelevant. I recognize that managing a project like publishing a book over email was completely insane. So I, I can't say that I'm an active user now. But if I need to be involved in a project in which it would make sense, you guys are at the top of my list. Paulus. 
<laughs> yes. I'll answer that and then I'll come back to you. The question, if you didn't hear it, was how many companies in my research have stopped using email? Short answer is a small number, but it's an increasing number. There are certain people who are going off the grid. There's a guy actually from IBM who checks email, I think, once a week. And people know to contact him through other channels, whether it's public like Twitter or internally they've got some tools there. Um, hopefully this book will... I don't think that you have to eliminate email completely, but internally I think there are a million better different tools. What was the second part of your question? The question, if you didn't hear, was how do people recognize different tools? If you're using something like HipChat and then you're using something like email. Um, I don't think there's a simple answer because you may not want everything in a searchable way. Right? And you, you do, look, I understand if you only use email, then you know that the answer in theory is somewhere in your inbox if you can only get to it. Right? Now, email has certain limitations. The visualization that we talked about earlier uh, with Smartsheet is one of the things that I think flat out email just cannot do. Um, I tend to think that it's important for people to move conversations away from email into something shared. Not everything, but certain things. And certain threads, for lack of a better term, belong in something like a, a Smartsheet or HipChat or whatever. Um, I don't think there's a simple way of doing it, because if it's a performance review or salary, confidential information, maybe you don't want it in there. So I don't think there's a simple answer. Um, I would argue, though, that the, the, all the other bells and whistles of these collaborative tools offer greater benefits than saying, well, everything's an email and it's a central repository. Yeah, it's a central repository, but you can't get what you need easily. You can't see those visualizations. You can't search necessarily by hashtag. I guess you could say, well, what if we just start using hashtags in our email? But to me, it's kind of kludgy. You know, why does it always have to be email? Again, I'm not anti-email. Email has gotten a lot better. I use a lot of plugins for Gmail. But I switched to Todoist because I don't want to go into my inbox. I embraced another tool. If I go into my inbox to figure out what I need to do, and you just sent me a note, and you sent me a note, guess what? I forgot why I went in there. And the costs of switching are actually significant. It takes us about five times as long to get back into the flow of things than if we get back out of it. So I intentionally embrace different tools knowing that everything won't be in email. Now, it's easy for me as a single person, but on a project, I'd say it's important to encourage people to start using the tool. Otherwise, you're right, the tool becomes less valuable. Again, it's the same thing with network effect, what I mentioned before with email. If only half of this room is on email and the other half isn't, that's much less valuable than everyone is on email. Everyone's using the same tool. Time for maybe one or two more. Okay, well, if no one has any more questions, thank you for your time. I'll kind of hang out for a bit if anyone wants to say hello. But again, I enjoyed it. Thank you.